So this is 3.2D, the fourth video, College Algebra. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about complex numbers or imaginary numbers. If you remember from Algebra 2 or Intermediate Algebra, um, you have I as uh, an imaginary number. And if you already understand this, you can skip this because I'm just going to do examples 10 and 11 and kind of go into the complex number thing for just a minute. Basically... What we have here um, is when you run into a, a number like this, and in order to solve this, remember you take the square root of both sides and put a plus or minus there. So now you've got x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Now there is not a number times itself that gives you a negative answer. Okay, so that number actually does not exist in the real world, but we go into the imaginary world, and it works. So, what we get here is we change this to negative 1 times 9, or square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. Square root of negative 1 equals i. So we're just going to replace that square root of negative 1 with i and the square root of 9 with 3. And we're going to turn it around. The i follows the number rather than is in front of it. And we get plus or minus 3i. So actually what you can do is when you see a number like this, uh, a negative number inside a radical, take the negative off, turn it into an i, and put it either at the beginning or the end of the radical. So it can either be i square root of 9 or the square root of 9i. Depends on what book. Then you can take the square root and you get 3i. And that's plus or minus sign is from that right there. Okay, so let's look at, I already did a in example 10. That's what I've got there. So let's do b where we have 3x squared plus 24 equals 0. And we do things just like normal. Negative 24 divided by 3, divided by 3, x squared equals negative 8. Take the square root of both sides. We get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 8. The negative is there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that with an i. I'm going to reduce the square root of uh, 8 to plus or minus 2 square root of 2i for an answer. And the book has it as 2i square root of 2. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on which book is which. It looks like since they're putting the i there, I need to start doing that. And that brings us to um, example 11. And example 11 is x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. And again, we are solving for um, x here. And they're using the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's go ahead and um, put in the numbers for a, b, and c. All over 2 times 1. And that is going to equal 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 over 2. Okay, which really the only other thing you're going to do here is you don't want to leave the negative in the radical. So they just pull the negative out like that. And um, standard form in order to write this is actually, and they don't, I, they don't really explain this. So let me put it here in red. should look like that. And uh, what we've got here is um, a plus b i form. 
where the number itself is first and then the number with the imaginary number is second. Okay, so rather than having it all as one, we split it up, put that over two and that over two, so that it looks like that. So this is part B of example 11. First of all, we're going to write it equal to zero. Then we're going to put it in um, quadratic formula form. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, oops, 2 times 3 because a is 3, and then that equals negative 4, that stays the same, plus or minus, do what's underneath the uh, radical sign there, that's over 6. So again, I'm going to pull that negative out, 4 plus or minus square root of 20, i over 6, and uh, once we do that, we can reduce our square root of 20 to plus or minus 2 square root of 5i all over 6, and again, they like to put the i in front. That looks a little prettier, they think, and that's fine. And then what we're going to do is um, split these up. So negative 4 over 6 plus or minus 2i square root of 5 over 6, and then we can start reducing. So that can change to 2 thirds, and that can change to 1 third. So that gives me negative two-thirds plus or minus square root of five over three i. Okay, keep that i there and we'll put it right there at the end. And this is in the form a plus b i. In which case I have not seen the instructions say anything about leaving your answer in a plus b i. So let me re-emphasize this. Any number, real or imaginary, can be written as a plus bi. So if you have, for example, the number 42. In this form, it would be 42 plus 0i. And that means that just doesn't even exist. If we have the number 3i, that can be written as 0 plus 3i. And because that doesn't need to be there, it doesn't exist. Okay, so anyway, some ideas on imaginary numbers, and uh, so hopefully that kind of reminds you of things in the past. So that's it for uh, Lesson 3.2.